Hey everyone, this video is dedicated to showing you how to build an easy starter creeper farm and it is very low resource usage so you can build this fairly early on and it produces around 5 stacks an hour of gunpowder. This is mostly aimed at the people who ask me on my larger creeper farm videos why would you need that much gunpowder and you are absolutely right. Most people will never need as much gunpowder as you see in those videos 50 stacks per hour is often overkill, so this produces 5 stacks an hour. And to the more technical players, this might not seem like a lot, and you're right it isn't, but nonetheless, it will suit most players just fine. If you're just trying to get a few rockets and all that, it is absolutely fine. As you can see, it is a fairly small build, and it can be achieved fairly early on. Of course, like any other mob farm in Bedrock Edition, you can't build it too early on because despite being relatively cheap for a mob farm, it is still quite expensive in terms of materials, but nonetheless, I think it is a build that is worth it. The creepers spawn on the spawning platforms, they walk into the holes, land in the water, and then they will fall down this drop chute. Down the drop chute, there is a trident killer, and this is where the player is standing. A Trident Killer is a Bedrock Edition exclusive killing mechanism and it will automatically kill all the creepers for you and if you're holding a Looting 3 sword then you will get increased rates out of it. That is, you will get the 5 stacks per hour if you're holding a Looting 3 sword and you don't have to do anything while you're AFKing. So you can just leave your game on pause like this and just go do something else. You don't have to manually kill the creepers. This farm will work perfectly fine on realms because I tailored the design to fit inside the 24 to 44 spawning radius. Let's get started with the build then. You will find the full materials lists for this build in the description. Alright, to begin with, we will want to choose where we are going to build our farm. Now ideally, it would be a relatively flat area. This area will do just fine. The important thing is just that you don't do it too near next to, let's say, something a mountain like this. Because what we want to do is that we want to position ourselves far enough from the ground so that no mobs spawn on the ground. So let's say if you were going to be referencing the ground position from here and then going up, then the spawning sphere would potentially overlap with this mountain and mobs would still spawn on this mountain and that in turn would hurt the creeper farm rates and potentially completely make it stop working. You can also just start from atop this mountain, it doesn't matter too much, all you want to do is start from a relatively flat area. So let's just start from here, and what we want to do from here is go up about 44 blocks from here. So just pick 44 blocks and build up. Alright, so we built up 44 blocks, so as you can see the ground position here is at Y71, you can see it in the top left corner, and when we get on the top, it is 44 blocks higher, so that's perfect. Now you only want to build up 44 blocks if you are on simulation distance of 4. You can check that in your world settings and if you are on a realm, your simulation distance will automatically be set to 4, but if you are on any other simulation distance, then you want to go up 128 blocks instead of the 44 blocks. This is because the spawning range is different on the simulation distance 6 and higher and you will need to position your farm further from the ground to make sure that nothing spawns on the ground which would potentially slow down the rates of the farm. Let's start building our killing chamber and we're going to place two chests next to each other and then just a hopper, you may have to jump because the chest is shorter than a hopper, right there. Of course you can remove those blocks and they don't have to be any type of block really, you just need to build up. If you want to get up to your farm of course you can play something like a ladder or scaffolding. Next up simply build with some solid blocks around what you have already built so that you have more space to work with because of course it is a little tight. Next up get some pistons, you want to place 4 pistons like this. Don't worry about the chest, you can still open it despite there being the pistons. After that we are going to place 4 salt blocks right here, then some observers, 
And these observers are going to create a loop. And this is our try and killer circuit, as you can see. It just fires all of these pistons in a loop. We want to place a lever right here, flick it, and that will turn off our circuit. Place a torch right here, because this is going to get dark later, and we don't want any mobs spawning on your AFK platform while you're away from the AFK platform. Stand up on the observer and place a door like this. It can be any type of door, of course. This is just so that you can access the kill chamber and collect a trident and re-throw it. Because what you need to know about trident killers is that it always depends on the person who threw it. So if you threw the trident, then you have to hold a looting three sword in order to get the increased drops. And if someone else wants to get increased drops while I've king at this farm, then they just simply need to go up here, collect the trident, and rethrow it. On one of the other observer sites, you need to go up 17 blocks, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and just repeat that on the other side, including the side with the door, you just want to get the salt blocks up to the same height. Next up, when we're up here, we just want to go out 6 blocks on each one of these pillars. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Do the same on each one of those. And once we are done with that, we simply want to make a full platform out of this. So just connect the edges. And after that, simply just fill in all of that. Next up, place a temporary block on the edge. And then we want to outline this further with our solid blocks. And once you did that, then we are going to place another layer of slabs on top of it. In order to make sure that no water will flow into the drop chute, we're going to place one fence gate and simply open it. Next up, you want to go into every corner and place some solid blocks in these locations. These are placeholder blocks, we are going to remove them later, but this is just for the proper water stream alignment. I'm going to do this next step in survival, just so that you can see how to do it. So basically what you want to do is place water sources in a line like this. Do not place any water here, only in a line like this. Same on this side, and same on this side. You can do this easily with two water buckets. Place one water source here, another one here, and then you can keep picking up water and just finishing up that line of water sources. Just like that, that's perfect. And then we are going to repeat that on the other sides. You get the idea, just keep on doing that. If done properly, it should look about like this. Remember, no water sources in these parts. You just want a straight line going from one corner to this two solid block formation. When we are done with that, we can simply remove those blocks and that will be our water stream alignment. Now this is convenient because we don't have to go one block up from here and we can simply keep it one block high. For this next part of the creeper farm, which is going to be the spawning platforms, we want to grab our salt blocks, our fences, our trapdoors, our coral fans and our buttons. If you don't know where to find coral fans or how to farm them, I have linked a simple coral fan farm design by my good friend Kairiu in the description and it will prove very useful. If you do not want to farm any coral fans, you can replace them with trapdoors. The coral fans are used to trick the creepers into walking into holes, but the trapdoors will do the same job. You will just have to add the amount of coral fans to the trapdoors. However, I recommend the coral fans because using trapdoors instead will result in a slight loss of rates. Standing on the edge, in a corner, we want to place three blocks like this and remove the previous ones. This will be our first spawning platform and what we want to do is make a waffle pattern out of it. So basically just make a square and then you want to fill this in. And once you have fully filled this in, you want to make this a waffle by placing more blocks like this. Once you have this waffle layout, we want to simply place some fences around the outside. These fences will not interfere with the mob spawning. If you know a bit about bedrock mob spawning, mobs will always spawn in the northwest corner, and this will not interfere with the creeper spawning.
Before we go any further with placing in the coral fans and the trapdoors and the buttons, we want to repeat this five times. And the way you want to space these layers out is like this, so that you have a two block gap in between each platform. Once you have repeated that five times, we should end up with a total of six layers. Now this amount is ideal because it all fits inside of the 24 to 44 spawning range for simulation distance 4, but if you are on simulation distance 6 or higher, you can of course build more layers. If you're on simulation distance 4, I would not build any more layers because they would be outside of the spawning range, it would be completely useless, but you can build less layers if you want to, although I would not recommend it either, because rates are not that great already as it is, and removing those layers would mean losing on even more. Now let's start decorating every one of those platforms. What we want to do first is place coral fans on the inside of the spawning platform holes. Now if you do not have any coral fans or if you just prefer to use trapdoors, you can just use trapdoors like this and you need to open them. Like I said, there will be a slight loss of efficiency and the reason for that is that trapdoors have a collision box. As you can see, you can stand on the edge of them, whereas you cannot do the same with the coral fans. Once you have placed the trapdoors or the coral fans on the insides of the soles, what you want to do is place some trapdoors on the underside of the next platform. Now if you are on the first five platforms, you can simply do that like this and I will show you in which layout to do it too. Basically you start from a corner and you do a waffle pattern. It is very simple, just simply on every one of those intersections of the waffle layout basically. But if you are on the 6th layer, it's going to be a little harder and you might have to place some additional blocks like this, not like this, like this, to get the layout going. But you get the idea and you will see what it looks like once it's finished. Once you have completed this process for one platform, you want to do the exact same on all of the other platforms. And like I said, the trapdoor layout looks something like this. Just place one trapdoor, one block above each intersection and below the platform above it. Having finished placing your trapdoors and your coral fans on every platform, oops, I forgot a single one, we want to move on to the next step, which is placing the buttons. Now what the buttons are for is blocking the spider spawns because of course we only want creepers in this farm. So what we want to do is slightly alternate our button layout for every second layer. So for the top two layers we want one layout, for the next two layers we want a different layout and for the last two layers we want another layout still. So for the first two platforms what we want to do is simply place the buttons right underneath those trapdoors. It is fairly simple. For the next two layers, we are going to do it in this direction. So this entire pattern will be moved like this. And for the next two sets of platforms, after the one that we are going to do now, we are going to want to move it down like this. If you did everything right, then this is the layout on the first two platforms. And this is the layout that you are going to see on the next two platforms. As you can see, shifted by one block to the side. For the last two platforms, we want to do the exact same, except that you do it in the other direction, meaning that instead of moving the button layout from here to here, you're moving it from here to here. All right, that should do it. So the first two layers look like this. The second two layers look like this. And the last two layers look like this. Now we want to build a roof that allows creepers to spawn during daytime as well, because if they can't, then the farm is only half as fast. What you want to do is go on the corner trapdoor of the highest platform and go up by six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then place one block of leaves. You can remove those blocks, and what we're going to do then is build a 15 times 15 platform of leaves. And those are going to darken the spawning spots that are below them and in turn allow creepers to spawn. Next up, we want to extend this roof with slabs. 
Now the reason we're not just using slabs right above the spawning platforms as well is because slabs would not allow surface spawns to occur. And basically there are two types of spawns in Micro Bedrock, surface spawns and case spawns, and they have separate mob caps. That means if we do not utilize the surface spawns and the surface cap, we will get decreased rates. Go to one corner of this leaves platform and you want to go out by 8 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Make sure those are bottom slabs so that no mobs will spawn on top of them. Once you're at this corner, you also want to go out by a further 8 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And repeat that on the other side. Next step is simply connecting up those corner blocks and then filling in everything that is in between those gaps. If done correctly and completely filled in, it should look like this, with 8 blocks of slabs going out from every side of this platform of leaves. You are almost done with this farm, and the last step is simply to head back down to your AFK spot. As you can see, the torch turned out to be very useful, and you want to throw in your tridents. Now there might already be some creepers inside of there, so be careful, what you can do is just, well, open it up and kill them. They are one hit kill from the fall, so that should be very good, and throw in your trident. Now like I said, if multiple players are playing, then you will need to re-throw it every time another player is attempting to use the farm. Now grab yourself a sword that is enchanted with looting 3 and that is required to reach the full 5 stacks per hour. And chat up with looting 3, that's nice. And flick the sleever. And congratulations, that is your farm completely done. As you can see, the farm wasn't that hard at all to build, it is not very big either, and you will get a nice amount of gunpowder out of it, while not spending too much time building something gigantic. Alright, so that was the tutorial. If there's anything about this farm that breaks, I will let you know in a pinned comment and in the description, but as of right now, it is working absolutely fine. So that was all of the tutorial, and if you enjoyed it, then make sure to subscribe, and I also have a Patreon page, so if you want to support my work, then go ahead and check it out. We also have a Discord server, and if you want to join that, it is a very fun place to be, so I definitely recommend it. But that being said, that was about it, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye!